Welcome to video 3-3b. We're going to wrap up this lesson with just talking about how we're using this concept of corresponding parts when it comes to a geometric proof, okay? So the type of proof that we are going to emphasize in this class is called a two-column proof. And you can clearly see that the two columns here, the left-hand column is statements, the right-hand column is reasons. You need to take note when you start a proof of the information that you are given. And it'll usually be given to you in a verbal format in writing like you see here. Or sometimes there may be markings on the diagram that are given to you that you can go ahead and actually um, put into words in the statement column. Okay, But in this case it's pretty straightforward. They tell us that our given is that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD. And again, this is in corresponding order, so you want to make sure you pay attention to the letters and the significance that they show, okay? Whatever your given statement is, is always going to become your first statement in your statement column, okay? Your goal is to get to here, where it says prove. Okay, so where your given is usually one of the first statements that you put in the statement column, your goal is to have what you're asked to prove be the last statement in that column. There's going to be some logical steps that you'll follow in between depending on how complex the proof is, but this one is pretty straightforward. Let's read through it. It says, given that the triangles are congruent, prove that D is the midpoint of segment BC. So we're going to start with our statement that was given to us, and then we're going to go and correspond what reason goes with that statement. So that is just the first statement is a given. That is a reason in itself. After that, we go to the second statement, which says, okay, now that I know the triangles are congruent, that means I know that their pieces are congruent. So the piece of triangle ABD, that is segment BD, or the second two letters, is also going to correspond to and be congruent to segment CD, the second two letters in the second part of the statement. So if BD is congruent to CD, then actually let's go ahead and mark that on the diagram. Remember, we use tick marks on segments to prove or to mark and show that they are the same length. Um, so they're congruent pieces there. And the reason, I'm over here now to figure out what the reason is that goes with that statement. This is the whole point of this whole lesson 3-3 three, three here, which is that corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. And remember, I said we could go ahead and abbreviate that, CPCFC with an acronym. And then finally, once I know that corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent, we can go ahead and put our final statement in, which is what we were asked to prove in the beginning of the proof. So that becomes D is the midpoint of BC. And why is that? The reason for that here on number three is that that's the definition of what midpoint means. It means that there's a point in a longer segment, BC, that divides, so that D divides the segment into two equal pieces. That's the definition of midpoint, okay? Definitions can be reasons themselves. So that's your first proof using congruence there, and we're gonna go on and to the next page, page 143. We're going to do another proof with congruence here. Again, make sure that you put the given information as the first statement, and then the last statement is what you're being asked to prove. Okay? So in this proof, we're being told that these two quadrilaterals over here on the right-hand side are congruent, and on top of that, you see the semicolon here, um, on top of that we have a second statement that says angle J is congruent to angle K. So I think that what we should do is mark on our diagram angle J is congruent to angle K and notice this time we actually have as we're filling in our reasons 
given actually appears as the reason for two statements because that's what we knew when we started the proof. Now let's go to statement three because these two are taken care of here. These two, one and two, are given. So let's go to statement three and it says angle K is congruent to angle P. Well now how do we know that angle K in one figure is congruent to angle P in another? And that is going to be by looking at the congruence statement itself. K, as you can see here, is the second letter in JKLM, and P is the second letter in MPQR, which means those are corresponding angles, okay? So what's our reason? What's the acronym that we've been working on in this section? It's C, P, C, F, C. So there you go. You've got your um, reason that K is going to connect to P, and now that we've put a reason to it, we can add that to the markings on our diagram. And then the question is, we need to somehow relate that J is congruent to P. J in this one is congruent to P in this quadrilateral. How does that work? Because K and P don't correspond. Well, that's K and P correspond, but J and P don't. Well, now that's true, but now we kind of have to take these two statements, two and three, together. Let's read them as a unit, okay? One says J is congruent to K, and then the second one says, yep, and K is congruent to P. So you notice what's happening here is that we kind of are cutting out the middleman of, of K, and anytime you're cutting out the middleman and making two statements and kind of smushing them into one statement with congruence, that is an issue um, with the transitive property. property, and you can abbreviate property, but please do write out the whole word transitive, of congruence, and if you want to, you can just put the symbol for congruent there, and I'll know you mean the transitive property of congruence. So, you guys, this is just two quick proofs to get you used to the idea um, of a two-column format. First of all, statements on the left and reasons on the right, okay? Um, and generally the structure of the statement column progressing from given information as the first one or two statements and then also the what statement you're asked to prove as needing to be the very last part of that statement column, okay? I don't want you to do any your turns tonight. We're going to do those when we get back together in class next time. Um, but this is just to kind of get your feet wet into what you're going to be asked to reproduce on your own. Okay, we'll see you guys next time.